Amazing. And although the princess has come home, she is still remaining quiet on where she was during her missing time, but frankly, I do not care. She's got that look at me, I'm back attitude, and it reflects in her style. You know it. She was seen returning to the castle, rocking those possibly was kidnapped leggings, all while sporting a I might have just run away and ran out of money <laughs> hooded cloak. What do you think she's going to be wearing at the wedding? No idea, but no doubt it will complement her chosen spouse's home kingdom. That's right. Princess Desdemona has finally made her choice, and it's Praetor Cargan of the Marvog Empire. I knew it was going to be them. It was the obvious choice from the get-go. So obviously obvious. How long does so, this go for? So long, Prince Phineas Pomp of the Petrard Kingdom. You just didn't make the cut. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. How long does this go on See for? See ya, wouldn't want to be ya. Oh, it's just repeating. Nope. So, she made her choice. Her life is filled with intrigue, and I feel like I am now somehow intertwined with her fate's path. Oh well, off to go see what the gang's up to. Oh. Uh, There's a note from Dad. Dear Lil, here is some excuse why I can't wait the guardshed today, love That's Dad. That's a guardshed for me. Wait a minute, where's the chronometer? I always leave it right here. Bye. Oh, God. Bye bye. CYA later. Bye. 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 I'm not going anywhere until I find my chronometer. Okay, what have I done with it? Not in or under there. It's not in there. There, there it, it is. is. What's it doing under the bed? Spooky. I, I don't remember putting it there. Wait, what time is it? I don't want to be late. For a time machine, you'd think they could have at least put a clock on it somewhere. This whole wretched endeavor has been a disgrace, not only to Prince Phineas and myself, but to the entire history of Petrard. King Phineas and Queen Buttermilk will not sit idly by while their royal lineage is dragged through the mud. Um. Jeez, what a big baby. Princess Desdemona is better off without you. Say what you will. Your words and your sweet-smelling city will soon be drowned out by the musk of the sulfur mines of Petrard. Yeah, May our no. home be exploded by a bottle of fine Petradian fizzy. Well, no. that's not great. Okay. Except from a Petradian book of etiquette and manual and politeness. The general distaste for non-humans in Petrad, however, or any formal event is elevated by the presence of elves. Delicate beauty rules the day when it comes to the meal. Remember this golden rule, even in the face of total catastrophe, Dignity, also dignity. Except from a wedding survivor's guide to the Magua Empire. The guest senses were sorted at one of their week-long wedding battles. Admiration was heaped upon people around me wearing war paint. The more hardcore, the better. The smell of meat and blood hung in the air. The approach to food was utilitarian. It was treated mostly as an afterthought. Reports indicate a dramatic increase in secret meetings and rumblings of revolution. To admit a, gob a goblin is to be hit with a 40 gold fine? Well, we're not admitting goblins. Vendors and artisans making their way into the sprawl. I'll be in the office if you need me. Okay. That Wakandan prince I sent all my banking information to finally came through with my share of the gold. Call me if you're in a pitch. Okay. Yeah, we've got enough to... Do all of these again. You good, we man? Do you want good all? Yeah, you want uppies, don't you? Okay. Yeah, we can do uppies. Just need you to not be all in my headphones, okay? 
A piece. A piece for puppies, yeah? Oh, what Michael. are you? Michael, okay. Hello, Will. Oh, buddy. Okay. What? No more sparkly suit? It was a rental. Besides, today I'm here in a different capacity to help coordinate the royal wedding. Oh, he's the guy who did the um the thingy. Okay. You have a lot of jobs, Mike. And wedding planning is my least favorite out of all of them. You good boy. Tell you wedding what, why don't worst. you be the wedding planner for the day? What do you think? Oh god. I think it's very irresponsible to get a 12-year-old girl to do two grown men's separate jobs. All you have to do is choose the music, decorations, and food menu for the big event. It's simple. Just let in the one you like the best. Okay. Or the one you think the groom would like best. Or who the bride will like. I'm sure it's not really going to affect anything. Or it might. See, it's simple. Do you want me to explain it again? No. Okay, good. The only thing I hate more than wedding planning is talking about wedding planning. The wedding musicians will be coming by for you to choose first. Here's the gold. See you later, oh, Lil. I've got four um, interactions. You have 350 gold remaining in the wedding planning budget. Okay. About. Whoa, this gig pays great. The money's not for you. There's three choices for music, food, and decor, and each comes with its own price tag. The gold is the budget for the wedding. Do I have enough money to just pick the most expensive choices? The most expensive choices are going to be the best, right? Not necessarily. And no, you don't have enough. Of course Anything I over budget will have to come out of your own pocket. Well, how? I see. But if there's any money left over, you get to keep it. Well, cheap options it is then. Thank you for your candor. I see. We're on a tight timeline, so keep an eye on your action points. You've got four per round, so that's talking to everybody once or to two folks twice. You get the idea. Need that run by you one more time? Nope. Remember, you do the choosing. I'll be here to record your choice and keep track of the budget. Okay, well, it's no biggie. Just choose the three most important elements of any wedding and try not to stress that it's a royal one. You got this. Amazing. Okay. Okay. Vlad Extreme here, mate. I know what you're thinking. What is the baddest, metalist bad boy of death metal playing some skint royal wedding? Well, I ain't here just to collect a big paycheck, mate. I'm here to stick it to the bourgeoisie and not take any of their crap, mate. Rock and roll all life long. Job done. Job done. Hired. Fully hired. Hello. Hi. Hello. My name is Suzette Courgette, and I sing um, with my voice. I do the slow songs and the nice songs and some of the ones you know. No. Hello, young lady. The name is Jacob Fiddlestein, and me and my accordion oh, no. here play all the polka conga you kids are so crazy it's weird about these it's weird things. Al. A one and two and polka conga two and three and polka conga three and one and polka conga hey! Oi! I nearly winded myself there. As it turns out, I left my amplifier on the bus, mate. It must be sitting there right next to all my awards and trophies, mate. I've got to go with... I've got so to go... let's cut the fuss and let me through, right? Because as we all know, everybody likes the sound of what Daddy Vladdy is putting down. Daddy Vladdy. Extreme! You had me at Daddy Vladdy. You had me at Daddy Vladdy. Okay. Have you made up your mind? Yeah, I have. Oh, he's so expensive. Yeah, fuck it. 
guess. Extreme! Good choice, maybe. I'll write this down and be back when the next group turns up. See ya, kid. Okay. Oh, hello! Well, if it isn't THE Edward, THE Great Magician. Got another group of brats to entertain? Where are you pulling a rabbit out of now? I'm afraid I've put my days of magic and illusions behind me. Okay. You got kicked out of the Magician's Union, didn't you? Yes, I did. Seems people preferred the actual dark arts to my... light entertainment. No matter, though, I've got a new career now. Working at your parents' garden shop? They wish. I'm a wedding officiant. Oh, God. I'm here to officiate the royal wedding. Okay. Really? You? Uh, I mean, you are? I am. Are you sure so you are? it's the Edward, the wedding officiant now, is it? Of course it isn't. Do you know how ridiculous it was for me to have the Edward, the magician as my name? It was so redundant. It really was. I can't believe nobody ever told me. Two these? I must have looked like an idiot. Well, when you put it that way. So now it's just Edward, the official officiant. With only one the, thank you very much. Having official and officiant is also redundant. It is? Why didn't anyone ever tell me that? I'm telling you now. What am I going to do about my 5,000 brand new business cards? Well, can't you cancel the printing? I did them by hand. He's not wearing his glasses again, X-ray. There they are, found him. That's where I wrote down all my notes on how to be an officiant. I wouldn't be able to do my job without them. My glasses! Thank you, Lil. Yes, I keep them right here in my pocket. I'll put them on right away so I don't lose them. Now at least you'll be able to see to officiate. And you know, so you can see where you're going. Right, let him in. Edward, the official officiant, I hereby grant you access to the sprawl to officially officiate the royal wedding. Well, technically I haven't been hired yet, so here's hoping I get the job. Thanks again, friend. We're not friends. Oh my God. Are Edward and I friends? Damn it. Maybe there was a way to help him or we could have maybe... What could we have done, gang? We got his glasses. I'm going to rewind. <laughs> well, if it isn't... I'm afraid I've put... You got kicked out of... Yes, I did. Right, so we'll tell him... I... Right, let's... Scan him first. Get him his glasses. That's where I wrote down all my notes on how to be an officiant. I wouldn't be able to do my job without them. My glasses! Thank you, Lil. Yes, I keep them right here in my... Right. And you know, so you can see where you're going. What else can we do? So it's the Edward. Of course. I. Yep. Well. So. 
Having a f it. I'm telling. What? I. Okay, we've done that. I wonder if the decoder ring will work on the paper. Or do we just speak to him one more time? I think the decoder ring is going to be not going to be useful in this point. I'm just going to speak to him again. What made you want to become This morning, someone from the castle came into my parents' shop to place a one three-hour course at the Elven Community College later, and here I am. It's my first gig as an officiant. Pretty exciting to get to officiate the royal wedding. Well, technically I wasn't hired, but maybe it's a detail they left to the last minute and need someone desperately. I don't think weddings usually work that way. Oh no. We're not going back again. I don't think any of that's going to be helpful. Edward, the official officiant, I hear- Well, technically I haven't been hired yet, so here's hoping I get the job. Thanks again, friend. We're not friends. Yeah, that was a pointless rewind. I can't think what there would have been a way to help him with. Maybe Hello the ring. Hello there, I'm back. On to the decorator candidates. I don't have to tell you how important the interior decorations and overall aesthetic of a wedding can be. Okay, I don't we're gonna have to go tell vibes you because I refuse to tell you. Anyways, vibes. here they are. Take your shot. Oh, the painter guy. Who am I, you ask? Only the editor of the biggest wedding magazine in circulation right now. There's no one else who can do the royal wedding justice, darling. Surely you've seen my work. Just don't look in last year's issue, darling. I went on a real tangent about slaughterhouses one night, and my team printed everything I said. Blame the quaaludes. <laughs> this year, darling, we'll do something daring. Daring and bold, darling. Can no. you feel it? No, 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 no. Some grand ideas, you know, for how the royal wedding should be. You might not know it, but I read all the latest wedding magazines down at the salon when I'm getting the old do done, and apparently what's in these days is meat. Big bold slabs of meat on the wall. It gives things a real abattoir feel, so they say. So I guess I'd go with that. Yeah, no, we're not hiring you. No meat on the walls, no meat on the walls, but this Hello dude... again, Mum. But let's see my way down to do some decorating for the royal wedding. Ain't much of a decorator per se, but I got my cerulean blue, blood red, and cadmium green with me. So I'd go do something with them, I suppose. I like you. I'm ready. I'm ready to I'm ready to make my choice. Catch like you later, I told dear. You. Buckets of paint, see? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready Have to make my decision. Mind? Yeah, the cheap goblin. Yes, I'm sure. I really appreciate the work, Lil. I'm gonna paint the town red. I'm blue. I'm and green. green. <laughs> <laughs> and it's set in stone. I'll write this down and be back with the next group. See ya, kid. Okay. Oh, I should have called her. It is I, Articulous Flame Hands, hey. a contestant you did not find worthy on the hit show So You Think You Can Save a Princess. I didn't find you worthy, no. Not going to lie, that really stung. In any case, I have a message to deliver to the High Council of the Mages Guild. So if there's nothing else, I will be on my way. What's the message? Oh, it is getting harder and harder for mages to communicate openly. So everyone is resorting to this secret message, cloak and dagger nonsense. Between us, there's talk of mages dabbling in the magic that dares not speak its name. A lot of times, finger pointing can be a sign that there's more to the story than one side has to offer. Keep your wits about you. How old are you again? Old enough. <laughs> <laughs> Do 
She's an old soul, is Lil. She's an old soul. <coughs> Did you just truth spray me? Yes. Um, yeah. Did it work? I have been telling you the truth. Jeez, you're real suspicious. Yeah, that's this whole job. Well, I'm delivering this message. Actually, now that I think of it, the fact that this message is so heavily coded is ring, highly ring, ring, unusual. Ring. I'm a guild member in good standing, but things have been trending that way ever since King Oswin died. It's like everyone started breaking off into different factions. It's hard to tell who is steering the ship, you know what I mean? Hey, can I see the letter you're delivering? Incredible. I like the ding sound. Let me see. Wait. What? No. This cannot be true. These renegade mages are more deeply embedded than I thought. I was sent to deliver this? Dear child, thank you for saving me from myself. I must flee and work to weed out the bad actors within the guild. Dark days lie ahead. Be careful. Your name was also mentioned in the letter. Oh shit, son. Amazing. You helped to reveal some of the murky goings on within the Major's Guild and saved Articulus becoming an accessory to it. All right, kid, can you feel it? We're almost done. done. This is the last hellish choice you'll have to make as a wedding planner. I, for one, cannot wait to be finished. Just hurry up and pick the food option for the wedding so we can get out of here. I'm not allowed to leave. Oh, hello. Hello, Kelly. Um. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Je m'appelle François Saint-Francais. Head waiter à la chaise de la maison. We provide the finest and the fanciest of delicacies for the newly married royal couple and their guests. Only the smallest portions for the highest prices, of course. Very chichi pompon for the snootiest of people. Pompon. A place someone like you or anyone you know would never get into, no matter how hard you tried. Absolutely not. Good afternoon. I am here today representing Catering Corp regarding a contract to provide the sustenance for the large gathering known as the Royal Wedding. Straight to the point, I like it. Catering Corp is willing to provide the base amount of calories needed to sustain such a high capacity event in return for appropriate remuneration. I am accompanied by samples of our food and a detailed list of ingredients available upon request. Surely it's Kelly. Monty's has the soup. That's all I'm oh, allowed it's to Monty's. say. Monty's. Here's the menu. Spoiler: It's soup. One appetizer soup, entree soup, dessert soup. Have you made up your mind? It's either Catering Corp or Monty's. I think it's Catering Corp. Nah, fuck it, it's Monty's. Yeah, sure, why not? We look forward to making it a super event. Get it? Yeah, I get it. Thank God this nightmare of a job is over. All the rest of you go home. Good choosing, kid. Well, at least I hope it's good. I wouldn't want to be the one responsible for messing up something like a royal wedding. Anyways, goodbye. Bye. Goblin. I am a citizen of the sprawl. I have nothing to declare on my person and I demand to be allowed entry. Goblins give, it's a 40 gold fine. 
My guy, I can't I let you in. I have no further statement to make beyond the following. <sighs> You're kind of intense, aren't you? I am a free goblin living in a free land. Or so it's the it. narrative we've all been fed for decades would lead me to believe. Now, will you let me in or not? No, I'm sorry, my guy. Would I get money for jailing him? Nah. Let's find out. I get it. You're just following orders. I am going to prison on behalf of the Goblin Liberation Army. Still, you should come by the Goblin Liberation Army headquarters sometime. Here's the password. Come, it will open your eyes to what's happening in the sprawl. Okay. Followed the writ to the letter and avoided paying a fine. Well, is that what you think our game is about at this point, really? I'm not paying for... Hello. Where's Hamish? I, I really don't have time for... Uh, say, you there, little girl? I, I need to get to the other side of the sprawl without delay. I need you to listen to me. This is time sensitive. I know you got your instructions, but it's important that I get going quickly. You're gonna have to tell me a I little... I swear someone was supposed to give you guys a heads up that I was coming. Let me spell it out for you. I went to school to become an ice sculptor. My parents said, you'll never make a living at it. And they were right. Until the royal wedding, that is. This is my big break. I got the ice. I sculpted it. Now I have to deliver it. It's hot out. Just let me through so I can prove my parents wrong. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love Sounds to. Sounds like you're under a lot of pressure. I'll try to get you on your way. I need to. I need to. Thank you. You have been an immeasurable help in the battle for my parents' approval. I, I'm, so, I'm so sorry, though. I'm, I'm so sorry in advance. I have to do this. I didn't want to scan her. I wanted to scan the... Okay, she's got those on her. Sure. That's my chisel. I must... Yeah, I'm just going to let her Thank through. You. I'll need that. That was a waste. I mean, thank you, but my work is probably ruined. <sighs> You're just doing your job, I suppose. I might be able to salvage something. Gotta go. That wasn't good. That wasn't good. I did a bad job. You let her in, but her sculpture was unrecognizable. Yikes. Hello. To whom it may concern, your choice of a wedding displeased the prayer to greatly. You receive no bonus for your tour. <laughs> your toy or no Kepler for you, Kepler. <laughs> Yikes. But they still wrote Kepler there at the end. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. 20. Okay, great. What? What's going on? Should have been the wedding planner's fault. Yeah. I have a very bad feeling about this. Oh no. Salve il squadra. Regno mio grande. I need to get out of here. And fast. Quido Ruiz, Curtao Ludimus. Think, Lil, think. Hospices in Ocreño, a Tulistina Dona Solita, a Grequiritur Imolatio, Irchis Immortem Vitare Velis. Ah, no, I'm not going to say. Non custoditus avira, Paucatanku momenta, abis andaquam to consuma. Non io cari, non facere maliquida, si è sentibile. Ego son dima, e Deus me incisio ex miles omines inox necato. 
Municipium de Decem Antiquam Pe Imperficium? Sige, bene. Decem. Nove. Octo. Sete. Um... Sex. Quinque. Quattro. Tres. Duo et demidium. Duo. Unum et demidium. Unus. Gravissime non omnibus hoc faci. Hoc extremum fato est refortende unde venistis. Ignoce aedus. I clicked on the... to throw this stupid time machine down a deep hole. Okay, Lil, get it together. You can still do this. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. to take it back. Sh got too real with your chronometer 3000 thing today. I don't want it anymore. Hi, B. So nice to see you, B. Your paper in the Journal of Dwarven Medicine was a revelation, B. Well, excuse me, but I was just pulled into what I'm guessing was a parallel dimension and was almost murdered by a demon. Hmm, how unfortunate. I always wondered what the byproduct of St. Bartholomew Inglebrook's lunar incantation would have on the relationship between time and interplanar folding. Stop it. I don't care about any of that. Just take it back. I'm sorry, I truly am, but we've come too far. I'm sorry I've been absent, but I've been watching, and the readings I've been receiving have been very promising. I don't care. But you would care if everything and everyone you knew and loved was at risk. Wait, what? Everything might seem like we're in a storybook, but open your eyes. We're on the verge of a civil war from inside the walls. And if you hadn't heard, the princess just pissed off some very powerful people. It is in your best interest to continue to help me with the device. Because who knows when we will need to rewind time and un something more important than which nobody you chose to send to the dungeon today. And you're here after allegedly going toe-to-toe -to -toe with an interplanar demon. I trust you. Okay. I'm not going to keep doing this forever. You and everyone else are going to owe me a childhood, you know? Keep helping me with the Chronometer 3000, and we can see about making that happen for you. That's a lot of fun. It, it is a lot of fun. It really is, Coupo. Um, welcome on in. It's really, really, really good fun. I I highly recommend it. We give, we've got a giveaway at the moment. So if you would like to be in a chance to win a copy of the game, we're going to be giving two away very, very shortly. Um, I feel like we need to go to the Goblin Headquarters. That will respond in a second, I promise. There you go. Hello? 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 I brought the orange slices. Was today a regular meeting day or one of those top oh secret planning gosh. for what's going to happen at the princess's I'm not, wedding day? My face hurts from smiling. Here? I'm here. Are you here for the meeting? I don't think so. Oh. Then you can't have any orange slices. Aww. Those aren't orange slices. Those are just the rinds. I got hungry. Oh, buddy! Let me just start to appear all in the all over this floor. Now you know what it means. <laughs> Convolution. It's beautiful, isn't it, Edmund? It really is. It's amazing that the GLA keeps the headquarters secret. This place is huge. 
It's a really pretty game. What's this? Oh, hello. I've gone back to where it started to find myself in light. <coughs> we were apart for more than a lifetime, but now it will be right. P.S. Remember to bring running shoes. I have a feeling the GLA leader wrote that. At least, I'm sure that troll over there didn't. I wonder what it means. What's the deal with mole people? Hello, is this thing on? Is that it? Check the bulletin board. Tangled web of corruption and lines and some coupons. There's Monty's. Am I missing something? We went to the GLA and there was something there. We ought to go and see Garby as well. Hello! Ah, here she is! The little guardsman who spoke to the princess and secured the union between the Sprawl and the great Marvog Empire. Yeah, it's me! Yeah, I did. Told her just what to do and she listened to my every word. I admire your complete lack of modesty. Modesty is such an ugly thing. Let us celebrate with a tankard of blood wine. Kapla! Kapla! Uh, I'm 12. I can't drink alcohol. Oh yeah, I'm 12, sorry. Ha <laughs> ha, never fear. There is no alcohol in Marvak blood wine. Just blood. In a big cup called a tankard. Yeah, I'm a hard pass on that. Haha, <laughs> very well. There will be much blood wine at the royal wedding where this Sprawl and Marvog tie their fortunes Mostly together soon. forever. It's... it's... Let it's, us raise a glass to the gatekeeper who brought us all together this day. It's like I wished really hard and they gave me a game. Kapla. Did a mouse sneeze somewhere? Come, child, louder and with fury. Kapla. <laughs> too furious, far too furious. Oh. We are not at war. Be careful shrieking like Somewhere that. Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the but middle. But as we say in Marvog, better to be too furious than not to be furious at all. I'm exhausted. I shall now recite the Marvog Pledge of Unwavering Loyalty, as is our custom. And that's my cue to leave. We should maybe go and see Garby. <laughs> this hat, it is not as fantastic as my previous not hat. Not as fantastic as your previous My journey, hat. it continues. My dear lord. You've been at this a while. You should have enough cash by now to power up your arsenal. Take a look. Okay, um... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, I want to pay one more and get maybe a couple more crystals. Yeah, that'll do. It's it's like the best way to describe this game. I think it's a bit like if Monkey Island, Papers, Please, and um, were were smushed together, and they added a bit of like D and D lore to it as well. I think that's that's my best description of it. Maybe. Okay. Cool. I think I've done everything I need to do, but are you sure you're ready to hit the hay? Yeah, I'm ready to hit the hay. That sounds about right. It fe that feels right. 
don't need to pay papers, papers please, is a magnificent game. Once he made it inside the school, Edward went to work trying to find people who A, wanted to get married and B, needed someone to officially marry them. After hours of approaching strangers who appeared to be in love on the street, he finally gave up. He slumped down on the stairs of the city council chambers. Suddenly, councilwoman Ash burst through the massive oak doors and practically tripped over him. After demolishing the stranger with a vicious series of cutting one-liners, she sought to inquire as to why Edward was dressed like a wedding officiant. Edward told her and she covered up the fact that she had forgotten to hire someone by hiring him on the spot for the royal wedding. Edward, the official officiant, was officially offered the gig to preside over the royal wedding. On the one hand, he felt he had struck gold with this being his first professional opportunity to try his hand at the thing he'd set his sights on a few hours before. On the other hand, his utter lack of basic competency made him nervous that he might make a critical mistake in front of so many high-ranking and well-armed individuals. At times like this, Edward would remember the words his parents told him as a child. Edward, we don't care what you do in life. Just don't become an amateur children's birthday party magician. So no matter how poorly it went, at least mum and dad would be pleased. Articulous Flamehands panicked at the discovery of the contents of the letter he'd been charged to deliver to the Majors Guild and raced home to his tower. Once safe behind the magical wards, he conjured a ferret to eat the letter so no one else could be burdened with the truth of what the Majors Guild was planning for the sprawl. Sadly, because he knew he lacked the strength or skill to continue while burdened with this disturbing information, he cast a selective memory spell on himself, causing the mage to completely forget about the letter and its contents forever. With the wave of his wand and a muttered incantation, Articulus became blissfully ignorant once again. Articulus! But you know who didn't forget the letter? The ferret Articulus conjured to eat the evidence. The surprisingly literate animal managed to catch a bit of it before he polished the papers off. How was he supposed to live? How was it supposed to live its ferret life now? Knowing what it knows. Sure, it was only a fat long charismatic little predator with the body of a chubby weasel, but he was no chicken. The ferret knew it could inspire others to take up arms at his side, not just rodents and mustelid warriors, but the sky creatures too. With their combined strength and superior numbers, they could easily conquer anything the Majors Guild would throw at them, and the rule would be saved. Step one, regurgitate the letter. Unfortunately, the sound of a wretching ferret caught the attention of Articulus. Thoroughly mind-wiped, the mage had zero recollection as to why he'd conjured the ferret in the first place, but he was damn sure it wasn't so he would throw up on his nice rug. The mage unsummoned the ferret before it could get the contents of its stomach up, and as a result, the fate of the spool remained uncertain. Thanks, BC. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um... Chuck, the enigmatic goblin, accepted his fate as goblin-sized shackles were placed in his wrists, and he was thrown into a cart bound for the dungeon. The cart never made it to its destination. His fate is yet unknown. By the time you finish your questioning of Irish Iris Lapidary, the ice sculpture, sculptor, her masterpiece had become a puddle under the hot sun's rays. She didn't bother making her way to the palace, but instead made a beeline to her favourite club in the Deloga town neighbourhood that catered to females of all species, who tended to have rad spiky haircuts, badass tattoos, copious paid things, and who loved to dance the night away while listening to dwarven heavy metal music. She danced away her sorrows and went home with a friend. The devil! I'm not going to read that. <laughs> I'm not going to read any of this out. Latin! <laughs> 